Hello, beloved, good evening, and welcome to St. Mark's. We are so happy tonight uh, to have you in our company, joining in, in our Bible study. You know, God is working in a miraculous way. <laughs> uh, we continue to live under the grace of God and by His mercies alone. And so this night, we are going to thank God just for that. Um, I would like to play this song as others join us. I will be playing uh, this song from the YouTube. Uh, uh, I have no permissions whatsoever. <laughs> I'm just hoping that they're going to let us enjoy and share uh, the gifts of those who are blessed with music. Bethaniel Bessie Feet and, and Anitan Adaba. That is the name that I see on this music. Enjoy while we wait for others. And I think upon your goodness and your faithful message day. I'm convinced that's not because I am worthy to receive the kind of love that you give. Your mercy 
Hallelujah to those who can sing. <laughs> oh my God. You know, God has been so kind and merciful to all of us. God has been so good. And I do not have a way to really show up uh, and, and, and show off <laughs> and, and, and just express enough gratitude to the love of God. In my own life as a person, in my family life, as a man of the family, and in my church life, as part of the congregation, and in my faith journey ever since the Lord has put me uh, on, his, on this path, I have seen the mercies of the Lord all the way. God has proved himself over and over and over again that I am nothing but just his wealthless servant, nothing but a child of God. And God has shown me over and over how wonderfully I am loved by him and how wonderfully God has made uh, all of us. I hope I'm speaking about somebody tonight. <laughs> I hope I'm describing how you feel every time you think about God. He will just not abandon us. He will just not leave us unattended. God is powerful. God is loving. God is amazing. God is almighty. And he is so forgiving and so caring. And we are here tonight to just witness about that kind of love from our God. Uh, uh, you know, each minute of our life, it is something, isn't it? It's a miracle. Each second that we can still breathe, it is a reason enough to say, thank you, Lord. We got to be thankful people. We got to be praising people. We got to be worshiping people. Uh, you know, the obstacles of life, unfortunately, it is always there. It's part of life. We cannot afford to wait until all the obstacles are gone so that we can then worship the Lord. We got to worship the Lord uh, 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 right now and right here at all times, every day. We can't afford to wait for one Sunday in a week to have the opportunity to worship. We got to worship the Lord, praise him, raise his name really higher and tell him every chance we get, let's just tell him that we love him, we appreciate him, and we know that it's because of his love and his perfection that we are still around. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> oh, my God. What a night. What a night. And so with that kind of welcome and introduction, I also uh, uh, am welcoming you into our new uh, Facebook uh, page for St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Brooklyn. And, and so uh, we, we will be um, examining tonight the scriptures from the book of Zephaniah chapter 1. Zephaniah chapter 1. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the scriptures for today. So the scriptures for you who are on the Facebook, you can see it. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7, and the verses 12 up to 18. Those are the verses that we will be looking at tonight. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7, and verses 12 up to 18. My friends, won't you join me in prayer? 
Oh Lord God Almighty, we are just thankful tonight. We are thankful to you. You have given us more than one reason to feel appreciative, to feel so humble, and to feel so thankful to you. Thank you for this day, and thank you for the days ahead. Thank you, Lord, for always being in our midst uh, to keep our lives safe and to cover for us, to protect us against harm and to save and spare us from the hands of the evil one who wants to harm our health, our life and our everything that gives us joy. We are thankful, Lord, for the people of St. Mark's United Methodist Church. We are thankful for the friends and uh, the supporters of the ministries of St. Mark's, whether or not they are actually members of the church. We are thankful for people who do not even know the church. They have never been at St. Mark's and they never met any of St. Mark's pastors in the past or present, but they love the church, they love our ministries, and they make time uh, to log in and support us. They pray for the people they don't know, and they pray that your kingdom can be built and our lives can testify about the goodness of your kingdom. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your provisions of love. We pray that this night you will guide us, you will enlighten us, even though we are not physically together in the same space. We are scattered all over, and others are still struggling to try to find out uh, uh, where are we broadcasting from tonight. I pray that your love and mercy, your kindness, will direct all of us to the right path. Lead us, Lord, and enlighten us. Open our mind and open our hearts as we engage to talk about your holy scriptures, that we can have a better understanding. We can grow spiritually and we can be grounded on the word of God, which we lack the most on our time. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And so, beloved, I'm going to present to you the scriptures uh, in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verses 12, all the way, uh, 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 Zephaniah, chapter 1, verses 7, and verses 12, all the way to 18. Be silent before the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will set Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their drags. Those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hustling fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the, four, the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. 
neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath, in the fire of his passion. The whole earth shall be consumed, for a fool, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. That, my friend, is the word of God under the prophecy of Zephaniah on chapter 1. You know, when I, when I read this, uh, uh, this scripture, uh, I was like, whoa, <laughs> uh, this is, uh, is kind of hard, it's kind of tough. Um, uh, yesterday, I mean, the last, the last two days, I have been um, uh, uh, joining the meetings of the United Methodist Church uh, in our Long Island West District, and this committee that examines uh, 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 the good people who are feeling called, you know, to follow uh, full-time ministry. Uh, or, or whether whether they intend to be local pastors or ordained uh, pastors or deacons or deaconesses. Uh, these are great men and women whom God calls every year uh, to join the ministries and 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 the, the you know the, the joy of just serving God. And I was, uh, I was just happy to see that in the midst of a time such as this, uh, when we live in a world that is so distressed, that, you know, if you look at it, you might feel like, huh, what difference am I really going to be able to make? Uh, and so it's, it's very easy to be disencouraged and to just uh, give up. Uh, uh, but when I saw them and I saw... Uh, uh, people of all religious, I mean, all racial backgrounds and all geographic origins and all language groups and dynamics. I was like, wow, the Lord is at work. He is still raising prophets and prophetesses. Uh, he is raising ministers, servants, uh, who are ready to carry on the mission. This prophet Zephaniah was one of those who always brought fire in the house. You know, it was very straightforward, honest. Uh, he would convey exactly what he receives from God. And he would not try to polish it up and to shoo it up or put some honey on it. Uh -uh. <laughs> he will deliver exactly uh, what he feel called and commanded by the divine to deliver. And in this section here, it appears as though the people of Israel, as we are all familiar, you know, we know that they are really no, no different than the rest of us. Uh, uh, you know, they, they are the chosen ones, yes? Just like you and I are the chosen ones of God. We are, we are the people of God, all of us together. And, and just like in America, we like to say, we the people <laughs> and after general elections uh, whoever wins uh, will usually say the people have spoken <laughs> and so it's time to move on and, and and you know sometimes you'll find a situation where one is uh, uh, scratching and scrambling and fighting and kicking and screaming but if the people have spoken then the people have spoken it is time to move on. And so the, the people of Israel, as you know, they, they had all kinds of trouble, just like us. Uh, there were times when they would get it right and God would be very happy for them. And he would bless them and prosper them and really flourish them. But there are there also times when uh, they would just fail a big deal. I mean, big deal failure and big deal disappointment on the eyes of the divine. And so, and, and, and you know, God could not hold on to his wrath. Uh, he would just go on and, 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 and let them know. That's the good thing about God, it's very transparent. 
I, uh, you know, my image of God is, is really uh, uh, not one of intimidation and, uh, and strong threats and all of that. It doesn't make up uh, my personality. But uh, the, 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 our United Methodist Church agency that suggests scriptures every week uh, uh, so that the, the, the United Methodist ministers can be uniform on their on what they are uh, you know what they are uh, giving to the people how they are uh, spiritually nurturing the churches uh, they they came up with these scriptures for today as one of the uh, great options and and I cannot avoid it <laughs> uh, uh, but you know it is really very strong uh, these are strong words uh, uh, just the, the introductory part the opening the opening remarks of the prophet in, in itself it's, it's, it does not sound very nice doesn't sound very very inviting or very accommodating or or, or, or embracing be silent before the God the Lord God be silent before the Lord God Wow uh, you know for the day of the Lord is at hand the Lord has prepared a sacrifice and he has consecrated his guests. And at that time, I will say Jerusalem with lumps. And then the prophet goes on and on and on. Sounds very, very aggressive, very strong. <laughs> you know, I like, I like that image of God. That it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always soft and nice. Uh, always, always kind and, and always loving. But, but even if you come to our human experience of parenthood, because, you know, remember, God is our Heavenly Father. Uh, we spoke about that uh, a few weeks ago, about how God is our Heavenly Father. Or heavenly, uh, and I added, I said, not only Father, but also Mother. You know, He's our Heavenly Mother, our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Parent, if you want to put it in a simple way. But there are some um, who would feel offended if you if you kept just stressing God as a father, you know, because they are looking at it from their human experience of our human father. Sometimes we, the fathers, the human fathers, are disappointment to our children. Uh, we 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 run away from our children. We we leave them alone with their moms. And then we go, we start other lives, and sometimes we start other families, or, or we are just consumed by the world. And the poor moms stay behind. Uh, they work two, three, five, ten jobs, struggling just to keep these babies growing and praying and taking the children to the church and hoping that one day uh, these children uh, that are growing up looking like they are fatherless, uh, you know, uh, uh, they can be somebody and they can feel proud and joyful and happy about themselves. And so that's what moms do. For the most part, the moms really have no, have no way out. Sometimes you'll also find a situation where what I just told you is the reverse. You know, uh, moms will just uh, go away, go a different direction, and the children will stay home with the father and the father alone will battle two ten jobs trying to raise these kids by himself. Yeah, we too. <laughs> we too, the father, sometimes go through that. Uh, and, and, but even though the reality though is that oftentimes uh, it is the fathers who run away and leave the responsibility of raising the children only to the moms. And that's why the place of a mom in our hearts and in the hearts of all the humankind is so special. It's so special. And by a mom, I mean every woman who has a heart uh, for children, who has a heart to nurture the entire humanity. And so there is an important role that both a mom and a father, including uh, uh, that father who did not necessarily have a biological child, and that mom who did not necessarily have a biological child of his or her own, you know, 
And so all these parent figures, they play a big deal, a big role in the life of our humankind. Humanity would not be anything without both the image of a father and a mom. These two together were made by God wonderfully and intended by God to live together wonderfully and to raise uh, this new life, these new creatures, uh, these new beautiful human beings that we call our children. But those experiences, you know, sometimes they just go wrong, completely off, and it, it causes a big deal of trauma uh, to a child who grows up being hurt by his or her own dad. Um, and so when you, when you read uh, the Bible, uh, uh, which has been inspired and, and revealed out of the culture, of the Jewish culture, uh, which is uh, uh, very much, um, you know, patriarch uh, type of culture, like many other cultures, where the, the role of a man and the father is, is the most highlighted, you know, most highlighted than the role of uh, the mom or the women. You will remember that when Jesus had that miracle of... Uh, 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 feeding people who were hungry during his service. Uh, Jesus was like me. He was preaching nonstop. <laughs> and so his disciples came to him and said, hey, 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 you know, you preach good. You preach good. We don't, we don't blame, but you got to know that we have children here. We have uh, elderly here who are on medication. I mean, people are hungry. They are starving. Stop preaching. Let them go. Uh, to find something to eat. And Jesus felt compassionate uh, by that kind of misery that they did not have anything. And they said, we have nothing to feed all these people. And Jesus, um, uh, uh, you know, picked on whatever they had, a little bit of five loaves here, uh, whatever, and, and he blessed that. And, and they had more than enough. And enough leftovers to take with them, to take away home. But the, the writer who put that on the scripture, uh, he, you know, he did not include the women and the children that were there. So he just went ahead and counted those who were men, you know, grown men. And he came up with a count of 5,000. And so there were 5,000 men without including women and children, you see. So that tells you how our cultural background and, um, you know, our, our uh, 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 makeup of the way we live our lives and the way we look at each other can sometimes diminish uh, or even hurt the, the, the equally precious place that a woman occupies uh, in the society and in the hands of, in the eyes of God. And so, um, when we, when you say, uh, as it is written on this uh, uh, Bible, that God is our Father, uh, some people feel like you know they don't have a, a positive image of a father to be able to relate with God as a father. You see, now, I personally like to 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 see it in a way that. When we say God is our Father, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, regardless of what my personal experience of my human father, my human dad was like, uh, regardless of that, you know, I, I I rather see God as that perfect Father that my human father may not have been. So God is our perfect Father, and God is our perfect Mom. In that sense, if you had issues with your a human mom, then you know that, you know, God occupies that better place. And so we're, as we were, we're, we're talking with uh, uh, these uh, 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 great people that God is calling into ministry, that I told you about uh, uh, moments ago, you know, we came to a point where we had to talk about that, <laughs> you know, 
and so we 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 were talking and 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 we were saying that you know uh, it might be better to just refer to God as God. <laughs> Just refer to God as God, because that's what uh, God is. Um, uh, if you have issues or concerns about whether God is a he or she, you know what, uh, just leave that discussion aside and just refer to God as God. <laughs> but there is no way uh, our human image of father, our human e image of mother uh, can be equated with the image of our creator. So God is both our father, the perfect father. God is our perfect mom. God is our perfect, uh, you know, uh, creator, uh, the, the perfect carer and the nature of our life. Now, what would make that God I just uh, spent time talking about be so upset that he would come up with a prophecy to his servant? that is so strong like this, that begins with the sentence, be silent before the Lord God, you know. <laughs> and then go, going on and on and talking about uh, the day of the Lord that is coming. The day of the Lord. And uh, uh, you know, the day of the Lord that is going, is being described as a bitter day. It's going to be a bitter day. Uh, uh, and people uh, will, will cry uh, as a result. Uh, the day of the Lord will be a day of wrath. Uh, uh, it, it is, a, it is, it is a, a judgment day, a day of distress and anguish. Because that's what happened. If you know that uh, you have not acted well, you have not acted in good faith, you have not done uh, the right thing. You know, uh, uh, when uh, when when your parents are coming home, uh, you will be so distressed. You wish. Mom and dad never came back home because you don't want them to come back home and see the mess that you did back here at home while they were at work or elsewhere. And so you will wish your mom never got back home and your dad never got back home. Sometimes we feel that way uh, because we know that when dad gets home, uh, there's not going to be joy in the, in the family anymore. There's going to be a lot of pain and sourness and shouting and cursing and insults and you know profanity uh, and, and so in that context then you would prefer uh, that school never ended so you can be at school all day and all night and enjoy some peace at school because you know what awaits you at home when you come back to mom and dad so that is a, 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 a ch rather challenging challenging uh, parenthood experience. Uh, the day will be a day of wrath, the day of the Lord, a day of ruin and devastation. Oh my God. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against uh, the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. So, you know, like I said, uh, these, these are not the kinds of, uh, uh, of <laughs> uh, 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 scriptures that I would celebrate very much. But at the same time, this God that is all loving, all kind, and all generous forgiving, He is indeed a God who has a uh, 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 heart and and he can he can get really upset you know every time we mess up yes his mercy and his grace is always present his love is indeed unconditional and God always bears with us but there comes a time uh, when he can just not help it but deliver his anger and his fury against us we saw the time uh, when he did it at the time of Noah. Uh, and God, you know, as patient, as kind, as forgiving and loving as he was, uh, uh, he could not help it. And he decided to wipe off all the humanity and everything else that was created uh, by his loving hand uh, was swept out uh, by those floods. And um, 
Uh, God spared Noah and his family, and he also spared uh, a pair of animals of each species in order to, uh, uh, to prevent him from having to uh, do the groundwork uh, of recreating again everything from scratch. And so he spared a pair of each uh, a species of animals uh, with, along with Noah and, and Noah's family in that ark. And when the floods had, had gone, then those animals could reproduce themselves uh, as the humankind as well. So we know, we do have evidence of the wrath of God. We know and we, we realize that Zephaniah chapter 1 and many other uh, sections of the scriptures that speak to the wrath of God, they are real. You know, they are real divine experience. And so, um, and the, the, the only thing though uh, that I really love about God is that every time uh, if, if you follow the Bible, if you follow the scriptures carefully, you will notice that every time that God delivers these kinds of uh, strong, you know, strong uh, words and strong uh, prophecy about what's going to happen, every time God does that, you know, you will, you, if you follow the scriptures carefully, you will see that uh, 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 that is really not what pleases God. And oftentimes, uh, if not all the times, when God delivered that kind of uh, prophecy, he is really warning us. He's not intending to implement the ultimate punishment, but he rather intends and hope that by hearing that reality, our inner senses, our inner self will be, uh, you know, will be uh, uh, sensible enough and awakened enough to wanna give up, you know, whatever, whatever wrong path, whatever wrong path we are in, and align ourselves again with the will of God. That's where you really see the heart of God, how it operates. Every time God has seen our evil intentions, God has seen how. Uh, we can be cruel and, and plainly just bad, bad, bad in many ways. And then he decides uh, not to just eliminate us, you know, like we're some kind of uh, uh, nothing, you know, no impact to his heart. But he will send the warnings, send his prophet, both in the Old Testament, it was prophets like Zephaniah, and in the New Testament, which begins with the birth of Christ. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ also continued to give those kinds of warnings all the time. So both the Old Testament, which has 66, I mean, 39 books, and the New Testament, which has 27 books, and the Bible as a whole, which has 66 books. If you go and examine any of those books, you will find you know, that reality in God. And you will see a God who uh, has compassion, has love, and, and, and you know, uh, and really his intention is not to, to, to crush on anybody uh, and to go rough on anybody. Uh, God does not intend to punish anybody or to make anybody's life uh, miserable. Our God is truly a loving God. But this love of God as a parent is not a blind love, you know. When we, his children, mess up and do something wrong and, or go in a complete opposite direction than what he wants us to go, then God notices. <laughs> when we say things uh, in the hiding or in whatever setting, and hoping that nobody else hears, you know, there's at least one person who always hears everything. <laughs> uh, God has his recording, his recorder, every corner of this world because he created it. You know, these trees talk, the walls in our homes talk, uh, in addition to those phones that we use. And so everything we do, God sees, 
Everything we say, God hears, and the, 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 any, any, any behavior or attitude we display, God notices that. And that causes a reaction in God. There is an impact in the heart of God to whatsoever we do or say or act upon. And so uh, if we are walking in the right direction, God takes pride, tremendous amount of pride in his heart. He'll be like, oh, look, look, at, look at my children from St. Mark's. You know, they are worshiping me tonight. They stopped their ordinary business and they are seeking to understand something from me. And then his blessings come down to us as we bow down to him, as we humble ourselves unto him and as we surrender uh, everything unto God. Uh, so God channels his blessings mysteriously and, and in, in, uh, you know, through uh, and into our lives. But when we mess up, indeed, God notices. I mean, you and I will wish that God never saw or heard or noticed anything wrong <laughs> about us. But, you know, God notices. Just like in our human experience, the parent notices the behavior and the attitude of their children. And sometimes as children, we will blame our parents. We will hate our parents for a moment. Uh, because they are being too too tough or uh, so harsh on us and, and whatsoever. And then when we grow up later on, <laughs> we will see that, oh, you know, my late mother, my late father, my uncle, my grandma, whoever raised you up, they were right when they got so upset with me about it. When they kept uh, uh, talking to me like this and or demanding that I behave in a certain way and so on and so forth. But you cannot uh, tell a parent, uh, a parent who is, a, a, you know, a, a reasonable, a reasonable, ordinary parent who has a, a, a love for the children and is trying to do the right thing uh, in, in his or her struggle to raise these kids. You, you, you can't say that when that mom and when that dad uh, is sounding a little rough on that day, uh, therefore, is a bad mom or is a bad dad, you know. The parents are just trying to make sure that you uh, uh, can 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 be somebody uh, who is better, uh, as somebody who is positive, and bringing a positive contribution to the society. There is something wrong, though, having said that, uh, when the parents just go completely off track and act like they're some kind of. Uh, uh, you know, enemies to their own little kids. Uh, that 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 to the point that the child, uh, you know, uh, feels just physically harmed and and even verbally harmed and abused and violated. Uh, because the words too can violate. The words can abuse. The words can hurt. And the words can harm. It's not just about physical violence that I'm talking about. So in those situations of extremes, of course, definitely that's not. Uh, 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 what we would like you as a parent to do. But a parent who, in a loving manner, doing his or her best, you know, to try to shape uh, your kids, uh, your little ones, uh, you know, uh, yeah. of course, the children may not understand what's going on today, but believe me, later on in life, <laughs> because if they don't listen to you and they don't follow your teachings, it's okay. The moment they grow up and then they go into the world and they live on their own and find their own way, they will remember your lessons. They will remember your teachings, whether you are still alive or not. And if you are still alive, they may not come to you and say, thank you. By the way, remember many years ago when I used to think that you just hate me or you don't love me enough or whatever because you didn't want to let me do whatever I wanted to do. Go wherever I wanted to go and say whatever my mouth felt like uh, I was wrong that time. I see it now. I'm learning better from reality. And thank you and sorry for that time. They will not come to you and say that. But don't worry about getting that kind of praise or, or credit or anything. You will just be proud to know that you have been a good mom, you have been a good dad, and you have been a good parent, and you have done your best. The rest is between them 
and God who is our ultimate heavenly parent for all of us. Amen, somebody to that. <laughs> but yeah, don't be mistaken. God does get upset. He does get, uh, God does get angry and, and, and even outraged. Uh, he did it at the time of Noah. Uh, but, but just remember that uh, God's intention is not to implement his, uh, his, his threats, you know, uh, uh, his, uh, you know, uh, God's intent when he sends out the word to you and to me to make us understand that we are going the wrong path. We are getting off track. The intention of God and the hope of God is to see you and me correct our ways, fix ourselves, you know, and come back to the right path. And walk with God again. Trust me, when we do that, whenever we do that, God is ready <laughs> to embrace us and to welcome us and to bless us again. And God will love us and God will not even want to remember the past. We are the ones who hold on to the past so strongly and so tightly. We do not want to let go of the past. Now, what happens when you do that? You keep the hurt, you keep the wounds fresh in your heart. You keep hurting your own self over and over because you can't afford to let go of whatever was negative from the past so that your heart can be open and fresh and empty and ready to receive something new. Uh, you know, there is something new for you. <laughs> there is something new lined up for you by God. If you can only afford to let go of whatever past you've been holding on and worshiping that and looking at that as, as the thing that makes you feel like you are somebody, if you can just let go of that and embrace whatever new thing that God has for you, you'll see that your life will be far much better. Your heart will be far much happier and healthier. And your spirit, oh my gosh, you're going to flourish <laughs> because in your spirit, you have no room. You have no room to accommodate anger and revenge and all kinds of evil. You don't have a time and you don't have a space to deposit that kind of feelings, bad feelings in your heart. That's the intent of God. It is not to threaten you and me. Uh, when God, every time God sends this kind of prophecies, uh, uh, you know, to proclaim to the people, God is really looking forward and hoping and waiting that you can turn around and, and make things right again and be able to walk uh, 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 for hands, you know, attach the hand of God again, just as a child that you and I are. And, and, and now, um, one example that demonstrate that, uh, uh, that kind of turn, uh, uh, that God can really, you know, stop the implementation of a disaster and, and instead place a blessing and a prosperity in my life and in your life is the example of what we see on the accounts of Prophet Jonah. Remember the story of Prophet Jonah? <laughs> now this prophet was called by God and um, uh, one of his missions was really a tough one. It was sent to difficult people, tough people, um, uh, tough people. And, and you know, and, and these people, they had no hesitation whatsoever. Uh, 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 to do anything uh, to, to hurt somebody and to harm anybody. They, they would not think twice at all. Uh, their level of evil had grown to the extent that God said, oh, you know what, enough is enough. <laughs> enough is enough. And he was just done. You know, God was done with her. Uh, with, uh, with the people of Nineveh. And so the mission he gave to Jonah was to go there 
and simply tell them as I just told you right now that you know what your ways are just too way to the left uh, and, 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 and now God is telling you that um, uh, 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 there is no more room uh, uh, for precious from him to you. You are done. However, <laughs> and listen to this part, but this is the good part. However, there are 40 days deadline that God has set up for you. If you can manage, and in the heart of Jonah, based on what he knew, what he heard about those people, um, uh, you know, in, 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 in Jonah's mind and heart, there was no doubt that they will be wiped off from the face of the earth uh, uh, at the end of 40 days. But Jonah was wrong. <laughs> Jonah underestimated the power of love from God. And, and he was shocked and he was even angry. Jonah was angry when he saw uh, how the people caught that message. They took the prophecy at heart, you know, and even the, the political leaders of the time, the royalty, you know, they came down from their, uh, uh, their, their uh, 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 vestments of greatness and they, they confessed their sins. They cried to the Lord. You know, they stopped eating any pleasures of the world. The, those who were married and those who had uh, girlfriends and boyfriends and fiancés, they forgot about them. Each one just focused. They disconnect from everything. Each one was just focused on the Lord. They were praying like never before. And they said, you know what, let us add fasting. They started fasting and they tear down their beautiful clothing and they, they, they were putting on sackcloths, you know, to look like, it's worse like looking like a homeless. It, 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 it just, they just looked like really they are completely subject to the mercies of the Lord. And God was like, whoa, <laughs> these people with this much evil, they can change like this? They, 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 they want to leave all of a sudden? I mean, they have been acting up all the way, but now they want to leave. And you know what? God demonstrated the best, the best uh, that, that God always is. Because God's heart was moved with compassion. God's heart was shaked with mercy. And God said, no ways I'm going to, uh, you know, eliminate my people. Why should I do it? They have repented. They have changed. They have turned around. God was so happy for the people of Nineveh. Their attitude, their humility. All of a sudden, these, these, these are cruel people, I'm telling you. If you know, you, you, well, most of us think that we have met cruel people. Uh, you know, go to Nineveh in that time. They, 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 all kinds of evil was in Nineveh. But when they changed, they chose to listen. They spoke to their inner souls. They spoke to their inner selves. And their inner selves communicated to their brains. And their brains came back to their normal senses. And in agreement with their heart. And they concluded that, you know, we are definitely in the wrong path. <laughs> we shouldn't be doing what we are doing. And we shouldn't be headed to the direction we are headed. It is time to seek God and choose God and walk with God. And God was moved by that. Now, God saved them, which proves the intent of God, the goodness, everlasting goodness of God. So if somebody ever uh, confronted you and said, well, um, uh, you know, God is always good and da 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 da. Uh, so, so you see, you, you have to be affirmative. Yes, God is always good. Always good. Bad things happen in our lives, in our world. Uh, you know, we don't understand why those bad things happen. It is not a good way of, of interpreting events of life and always thinking that it is a punishment from God. That's another thing that you and I got to let go. You know, uh, the thinking that 
Anytime something goes wrong in your life, it's like, oh my God, God is punishing me. Oh, it's because of that year. Oh, it's because when I was a teenager, I did this. Oh, when I was in high school, when I was at the college, I did this and I messed up. Please stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You are torturing your own self for no reason. God is not like that. Yes, it's a God who gets really angry and the prophets of Zephaniah is real as as it is real many other prophecies uh, when God every time God gives warnings about the need to change the behavior but that's really what it is all about God is sending that warning so that you and I can have a chance to make things right and be able to work with God when we are able and successful to do that God is good enough to forgive us and to 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 work with us again and to place a blessing in our lives. Do I have an amen? <laughs> okay, my friends, our time is up, but I do wanna uh, uh, I give you a few announcements before we pray and close uh, tonight's Bible study session. Um, we, are, we are working towards reopening our church. Uh, we are not yet 100% complete on the requirements, but we are 95, perhaps 98% uh, complete. And we are hoping that by the end of this week, uh, uh, the few things that we still have to get fixed uh, with these uh, companies that have to uh, make sure we have a, a, a proper care of the building and a pro in a professional manner so that we can walk back there feeling safe. Um, and so that, that is done. So we're hopefully gonna get that done by Friday. And if we are successful in that manner, then um, the district superintendent might be able to come uh, sometime next week to clear that, uh, to give us the, 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 the clearances that we need to have before going back to the church. He's gonna inspect uh, the church, inspect the signs and everything that uh, is on the list of requirements from the bishop. And then we'll be allowed to go back. So we are still on the waiting, but you know, we might, we might get uh, a good news uh, sometime soon uh, in the next, uh, in this coming Sunday, we might, we might have uh, uh, perhaps some update to give you. I'll, I'll always keep you posted. Now, uh, this Sunday, however, uh, this coming Sunday, um, I will do the service from the sanctuary. Uh, uh, as a congregation, you are not yet, you know, allowed to come back to the church. You will continue to receive the service uh, the same way you are receiving now uh, on the Facebook or on the conference call. Uh, the numbers are the same. Nothing changes, basically. Uh, so I will be at the church broadcasting the service from the church with those who will be helping me on that, on that uh, service. We are not going to do a video. So it's going to be a, a real live service on the real sense of the word. So uh, the people who have been training on technology to assist me with that, uh, they will be there. And uh, uh, the, the, worship, uh, the worship people who are, uh, will be involved with scripture readings and prayers and, uh, you know, uh, the music ministry and all of that. So all those people will be with me at the sanctuary, but only those people. And so you are to still wait until we are completely cleared to return to the church. As, as we stand now, in our zip code, we are still permitted by the government, we are still permitted to reopen the church uh, with a maximum capacity of 50%, which is half the capacity of the temple. And we got to sit, you know, uh, observing those distances of six feet, whatever, so what we are finalizing now is to make sure that there's proper marking. So when you walk into the church, you will know where to sit, where not to sit in observance of those requirements to keep you and everybody safe while we're in the church. 
we will still not be allowed to sing together, you know, as a congregation uh, in a worship like we used to do before COVID. So we are still under restrictions. We may be allowed back to the church. It doesn't mean that life back in the church is going to be exactly the way it was before. Uh, there, are, there are some restrictions. We're going to be sitting uh, six feet apart from each other, uh, except for families. Families who live together in the same household, they'll be able to share uh, the pew uh, and uh, there'll be no problem. And so we, we, you're not going to find ushers waiting for you and giving you a bulletin. No bulletins, uh, no ushers in front. You're just going to walk in, follow the signs, you know, don't, don't be too close to anybody, and then follow the signs and the directions. Sit where you're supposed to sit. You may not be sitting on, the, on, on your own place, because I know that uh, uh, church people like to sit on their designated, uh, self-designated seat. <laughs> uh, we, we are still under general safety rules. So wherever you've got a seat, please sit there. Uh, don't fuss and, uh, and fight and uh, scramble and scream and kick and scream. <laughs> We're going to cooperate. And so um, there will be no choir singing, no choir. The choir will not sing and the choir will not sing. Even when we are allowed back to church, while we are still under COVID-19 restrictions, there will be no choir, no singing the hymns. Uh, we will play the, 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 the hymns, all the music will be played. And uh, the renditions from soloists is the only thing that we're going to get directly there. So whoever is doing the musical ministry that particular Sunday, he or she will sing from the microphone alone. And we will just be blessed and enjoy ourselves. No shaking hands, no hugs, no kissing, nothing. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, at the end of the service or before the service start, uh, there, there is no sit, uh, standing in groups, talking too close. Always, always keep your distance and go straight to your seat after the service. Uh, just maintain the distance even as you're walking out of the church. Uh, keep six feet apart. Uh, keep yourself safe and keep somebody else safe. We want to make sure everybody is safe. The children are safe. Our elderly are safe. And uh, everybody, everybody is safe. That's our goal. And if you feel that you have uh, 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 serious health conditions, uh, that coming to uh, the church, even though we're going to have our masks on at all times, at all times, inside and outside the building, Keep your mask. If you don't have a mask, uh, uh, you know we will make sure you get one before you walk into the into the sanctuary. We're gonna make sure we do have masks that we kept for you uh, for the time when we will be uh, 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 reopening the church officially. So you are gonna get a gift of a mask. No excuses. Keep your mask on. <laughs> if you know that. Um, like some people we see, they don't like masks, they don't wear masks. So if you are one of those people, uh, please worship with us uh, only online. Do not come physically to the church building because unless you have a mask on, we will not allow you to, uh, to come in because we will be in direct violation of those safety rules. And we could, as a church, and as a pastor myself, could face severe consequences, both from the government rules and from uh, our church rules. So we want to make sure we, we respect those guidelines that keep everybody safe. And it is, it is going to be safe because we want to follow those guidelines. So if you feel in your heart that you want to come back to the church, once the church is open, please come back to the church and do not be afraid uh, just keep your mask on at all times and keep your distance and you will be safe. We have all those hand sanitizers, blah, blah. We, we are putting all of that in place. So, uh, and that's why it took us, took us so long because 
uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, when they allow us to go back to the church, that you and I will not have issues about safety. Uh, we're going to observe what is required. Are we good? I believe so too. So let us close the uh, 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 let us close this session in prayer again. Lord, we are thankful that you allowed us to gather together tonight and through this means of technology, we continue to give you thanks for every opportunity to learn your word together and uh, to pray together. We pray that you will be with us throughout the night and throughout the rest of this week and the weeks to come. Bless all the people uh, who received this lesson today, whether they are here in New York, whether they are outside America, from which, whatever point they find themselves, we pray blessings upon them. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my friends. Good night now. Bye-bye. See you Sunday online.